What's happening guys, Nate Bolin here. Today we are talking about the serve and chances are if you've clicked on this video, there is something with the serve that you're struggling with. Maybe it's power, maybe it's spin, maybe it's consistency, but this is not a beginner's video, all right? Just to be clear, this is assuming you've established uh, a baseline for a serve. Now, regardless of how good your serve is, there's gonna be something for you here because even the best in the world change their serves. We saw that with Novak Djokovic who made a huge improvement on his serve about a half decade ago. So let's jump right into it. Out of the gates, we've got to talk about the grip. So we all know in order to have an effective serve, an advanced serve, you have to have a continental, continental grip. grip. Blah, blah, blah. I feel like we've done a video or two on the continental grip. So we're not gonna talk about it here. We will link it, but we're gonna skip the continental grip. If you're not playing with one, you absolutely have to have it but we're assuming that most of you do. So let's move on to step two, and this is not a negotiable. All right, said step two, this is actually still part of step one, so we'll call it 1.2, 1.8, whatever. But we're talking about the stance. And I know a lot of you think that you have this wired, maybe you do, but I cannot tell you the percentage of players I work with that have this incorrect. And whether you have a platform stance or a pinpoint, to clarify, platform simply means as you line up, you stay with your feet apart. So if I go through my service motion, from here, my feet will stay apart for the duration. Pinpoint simply means as I set up, I'm going to pull that foot, my back foot up to my front foot. And there's a lot of different variations. You'll see some people start with their feet together. Now, I'm not, it doesn't really matter to me which one you prefer. I think it's easier to get off of both feet using the platform. I think it can be more consistent, but some of the most powerful servers in the world use pinpoint, myself included. I prefer pinpoint for rhythm. But here is what I am a stickler on with the stance of the serve is that no matter what you do, you have to line up so that your back hip, me as a righty, my right hip is behind my left knee. All right, so it's stacked. I'm gonna set a 45 degree. My right hip is behind my left hip. Simply being is that when you throw, you have to have the ability to get this back hip back in order to get the arm in the appropriate position. So I see players all the time line up to serve and their feet are stacked more like this. And what happens is that they, their arm never gets here, right? And I'm even okay if your arm is here as long as his back foot is around because we can see there it made about a six inch difference on the rotation. I have to have the ability to get my arm back and unload this hip. And the hip is only gonna load if it's loaded, and that's by stacking the hips. And number two is the toss. When I work with clients, and especially when I was working with you know eight or 10 people a day, people would come in, want to work on the serve, 80% of them at least, their primary issue was their toss. Even if they had sound mechanics, there was issue with the toss. And the reason being is that it was very simple. They didn't toss with their shoulder. They tossed using their elbow or even their wrist, or they just simply had too much of their hand on the ball. So on the toss, what you want to focus on is separating the hitting arm and the tossing arm. Just focus on the tossing arm. In fact, the tossing arm, regardless if you drop down your racket low or if you take your racket up high, like we see a lot of players today, your, your tossing arm should always lead. And what this does is if your tossing arm leads, it also allows you to be cognizant of a crummy toss, okay? So let's talk about what we wanna do with our hand. Let's get, a, from here we have a couple different methods regardless of which, whether you're doing ice cream, which means that you're holding the ball to the side, you can see there my palm is facing you, or I'm palm up, I want my, the ball in the fingertips, all right, so that I can easily release it. But the main thing here is that as I'm going through my toss, I wanna make sure that I'm tossing with my shoulder and my eyes are where I want that toss to go. We'll see Nick Kyrgios, as he starts his mo motion, his eyes are already up, and this gives him a target to allow the ball to go to. Now what the toss also does, and I've talked about this a ton in other videos, is it initiates the shoulder and hip rear pelvic tilt. A lot of players don't get their arm up high enough, so even if the ball gets up high, their arm doesn't go up high enough. 
but if the shoulder or excuse me, the hand goes all the way up, what you're going to see here as my arm still goes up chasing the ball, watch what happens. So now suddenly I'm in this shoulder and hip rear pelvic tilt. I'm on a nice angle here to where now I can start working and getting that shoulder over shoulder as I work up to contact. Step three is about the right to left motion. All right, so regardless here of how you like to start with your, the racket and ball, once the toss is initiated and your racket begins to move, what's important is that the racket starts on the dominant side of your body. And you can see here, the strings are facing down and my wrist is nice and loose. This is where I want the serve to operate through here. Now I'm, I'm using a very abbreviated pendulum. This is what I actually use on my serve. Some players like to go down together, up together, and allow more of this pendulum as the, the tossing arm. They get a little lag down here. But regardless of where their motion comes from, at some point, it has to reach this point here. And this is where the right to left comes in. So the right to left from this motion, the racket is moving from my right and then it starts working to the left, all right? We've seen a lot of people talk about, you know, whether the cone on the head, the, the, the birthday hat, we've seen a lot of tips for this. One of my favorites is saluting. I think that's an easy one to find as well, is that we all know that when you salute, you bring your hand up to your head. So it's gonna be the same thing that when you work from here, it's a salute. This is the right to left. Now, the reason this is important is that combined with getting the tossing arm up, getting that shoulder and hip rear pelvic tilt. As I work through the right to left, we can now see that I'm in an optimal racket drop zone. From here, I have the ability to find this racket drop, and that is where we're gonna find the majority of our power. In step four, we're talking about the legs. And let's be clear, I'm not talking about jumping. I know, you know, we see this all the time. This gets debated. The legs are responsible for it. 50% or more of the power on the serve, right? It's the nuclear power source. You've got to load energy down to initiate the kinetic chain. And then the kinetic chain releases out to contact. But what I want to clarify is that using your legs doesn't mean jumping. I've seen some of the most inefficient serves using the legs because they're focused on jumping and then it just breaks up the rhythm and becomes very disjointed. All right. So what we want to talk about is loading. And what loading means is that I'm just simply loading energy down through the ground. And as I push, you can see here as I push, if I do this correctly, as I load, you'll see my heels come up doesn't have to be way up here. I just want my heels up. That means that I've loaded. And from here, I'm just going to push up. Just make sure that you're loading energy from the feet to that back hip and that hip transfers up to the elbow. And that will get you the proper power exchange to contact point. Step five, we're talking about leading with the elbow, one of my favorite tips, because I think it makes the racket drop, it simplifies the racket drop, makes it a whole lot easier. What I'm talking about here is everything we've done so far is to get our arm into an alignment that's going to allow for the racket drop. So as the left arm goes up, I find the rear pelvic tilt. This puts me on this kind of loaded position. The legs work through. What will happen now is my, my weight transfer starts going up. My chest goes up to the ball. If I raise the elbow, up as if I was gonna hit the ball. You can see there, I enter this racket drop. Now let's be clear. We are not doing a racket drop where it's like an extension of the ponytail or combing your hair. This is too tight. We should see the racket operating back here. All right, so from here as I'm working, I push up, my elbow fires up and my elbow will come through this way. All right, so we'll link the video. We've talked about getting your elbow up to the ball, actually hitting the ball with your elbow to train this, all right? But 
This is really important that we're getting everything firing up. And if the elbow is high, the racket is low. The sixth and final step, it's all about the wrist snap, and we're talking about pronation. All right, so pronation, when you're making contact, we want to make sure that the arm is completely straight at contact. Now, yes, it is offset. If my arm is coming in completely straight above my ear, I'm going to have shoulder impingement. I'm going to have some shoulder problems, including rotator cuff issues, potentially a labrum tear. So I want to make sure, just like with throwing, the arm is coming out to the side, but by the time it gets to contact, my arm is straight. Now, the reason I'm talking about the, what your arm is doing at contact is it's going to influence the actual wrist snap. So a lot of times I hear coaches talking about like snapping the wrist and, and act, actively trying to snap the wrist, and that's not correct. What we wanna focus on is just making good contact because what will happen is if my arm is straight, I'm naturally going to pronate, and you can see there, pronation actually occurs with the racket moving away from me. If I supinate, the racket moves towards me, okay? And this is very unnatural, but we do see a lot of players end up doing it because they focus on a wrist snap and then the weight of the racket influences it in the direction towards their body. So from here, good contact. And from here, the wrist naturally wants to pronate. A great, great way to practice this is We've done this in other videos. We've talked about bounce downs, all right, getting this snap. If I toss from here and I bounce down, you'll see that naturally, good catch, Kenny. You'll see that naturally the racket wants to go this way. If I go straight here, I'm going to feel a whole lot of shock and strain through my forearm, all right? So just make sure that as you swing, you're swinging out to the side fence. And I know that seems funky, all right, because contact is actually going to occur here. There's my contact point, and you can see strings are flush with the ball, but then as the ball leaves, my racket continues to work through here into the finish. Those are the six steps for an optimal serve, an advanced serve. Guys, if you are working on one of these pieces, my advice is to take it slow, departmentalize it. Departmentalize or com compartmentalize it? Um, compartmentalize with the C. Exactly what I said with the C. Compartmentalize it and focus on that one aspect, okay? So make sure as well, if you're trying to start a new habit, you've got to start a new groove. This is, I'm preaching this because it's so important. If you are starting with the ball and racket together and what you're trying to focus on is getting the right to left or maybe trying to get the, getting your elbow to lead up to the ball, don't start here, right? You're in the same groove. Guess what's gonna happen? All that muscle memory is gonna stay consistent. You're gonna be like, oh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And then also maybe you're gonna over rotate whatever's gonna happen. Start abbreviate it, separate the two. Start with the racket on the right side and then just focus on the hitting arm itself. If you have tossing issues, just start with the tossing arm and start with the racket over here and work on that toss, all right? But guys, give it a go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you have questions, I'm always in there, happy to answer them. Um, and let me know what the feedback is. Did you have any success with some of the stuff that you tried or, or maybe you didn't? That's fine too, feedback is feedback. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you never wanna miss a video, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time.